What's up factory workers, welcome to the Gunpla Space Factory. Today I'm going to be showing you how I modified this turntable display with an adjustable motor speed controller. This will allow you to dial in the speed of the turntable to your particular needs. I'm not an electronics whiz, but I was able to figure it out, so I decided to make a video. This is a quick, cheap, and relatively simple mod to perform to your rotating display to make it more versatile. But it does require some basic soldering skills. I do ramble quite a bit in the first part of the video, so if you'd like to skip right to the mod and bypass my shenanigans, jump to this part of the video. Well, let's jump right in. So if you're watching this video, you probably own one of these cheap rotating display turntables. The no brand versions are usually cheap. I picked mine up for $17.99 shipped on eBay. These only have two speed settings, low and high, and that's all you get. This arrangement will work fine for most, and for a while it worked well for me. But then I ran into a slight issue when it was time to replace the batteries. See what I didn't realize is that when I first bought this turntable, I actually used a used pair of C-cell batteries. I wanted to use it right away for the Candy Finishes Wing Gundam video. However, I didn't have a new pair of C-cell batteries, and I didn't want to go to the store at that moment. Instead, I pulled a pair of batteries from my Maglite flashlight and installed them on the turntable. That was nearly 11 months ago, and those batteries were pretty depleted to begin with. So inevitably, these batteries died. So I thought, no big deal, I'll just replace the batteries and I'll go on with life. But that didn't go as expected. With the new batteries, I quickly realized that the slow speed setting was a lot faster this time around. Too fast in fact. It went from this, to this. So the whole time, I've been recording my Gunpla Glam shots with nearly dead batteries. For nearly a year. I'm such a big dum dum. So naturally, I had pretty much developed editing the glam shots based on the slow speed from the old depleted batteries. Changing my ways at this point is not an option. Stubborn old man. So instead, I thought up of two solutions. Either replace the turntable with an adjustable speed version. Uh, no, that was not gonna happen. They usually run upwards of 60 to $130 for a good one. Or try to modify this and make this one work out. So this is what I came up with. I found this adjustable motor speed controller that does exactly what I had in mind. And it's cheap too, under 7 bucks with prime shipping. So the idea is to completely bypass the original power switch on the display and rewire the battery box and motor to this motor speed controller. The motor speed controller also has a built in on and off switch on the pot, so that's a plus. So I chose to go this route and purchase the speed controller. I'll start by removing the battery cover and the batteries. This is just to be on the safe side. I don't want to short out anything, though there isn't much to short out to be honest. Next, using a plastic spudger, I'm going to carefully pry around the rotating surface. The surface is held in the center by a single square peg. I carefully work my way around taking my time as I don't want to break the rotating surface. After a while, it should free up and come right off. So the surface is attached to the motor by that square peg and then it rides on those four wheels on the sides. I was actually surprised that I got the speed controller the very next morning. I don't know how Amazon makes it happen, but I'm stoked. Now, what I gotta do is figure out what cable does what so I can wire the speed controller. Seems easy enough though, as everything is clearly labeled. The wiring inside the display is another story, however. I gotta reinstall the batteries and using my multimeter, I probe around for voltages to get an idea on how to do this rewiring job. After a few seconds, I realize I must desolder the motor's negative lead from the battery box and connect it to the negative motor connector on the speed controller. Next, I got to solder a new lead to the battery box's negative tab and connect that lead to the negative power connector on the speed controller. After that, it's just a simple matter of attaching the positive lead from the motor and the positive lead from the battery box to the matching connectors on the speed controller. 
I will be deleting the entire original switch and reinstalling this controller right above where the switch used to sit. Before soldering, I like to put on my mask as I don't want to be breathing in this resin smoke. I flow a bit of new solder and use a desoldering brake to clean up the tab. Next, I desolder the motor's positive lead from the old power switch. And now I'm going to repurpose this black wire that used to control the low speed setting and reuse it as my new negative lead for the battery box. Using flux and let it solder makes soldering so much easier. Leaded solder joints with flux always look shiny and nice. Now I gotta remove this lead from the switch and that frees up the negative lead on the battery box. And I also gotta desolder the positive lead from the old switch and that will free up the positive lead on the battery box. Before connecting all these leads to the speed controller, I strip the leads about a quarter of an inch and then tin them using some flux and a tiny bit of solder. Now I can go ahead and connect all the leads to the appropriate connectors on the speed controller. I start with the negative lead to the battery box. Then the positive lead to the battery box. Next is the positive lead to the motor. And finally, the negative lead to the motor. Now at this point, I'm thinking the wiring is complete, but I feel like I'm forgetting something. Before testing it, I set the power switch all the way to the left to the off position as I don't want to short anything out. It's just a precaution. I reinstall the batteries, test the voltages, and it all seems good at first. However, that voltage seems low. When I power it on, nothing happens. The LED doesn't come on. Nothing. Nothing moves. Um, I'm at a loss here. All the connections seem to be nice and strong. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on. But then it hit me. There's a couple of diodes that were used for the old switches speed controls and I forgot to remove them. You gotta remove those and attach the battery lead directly to the battery box. As before, I clean up the connector using new solder and a desoldering braid. Now I gotta desolder the diodes from this lead. I reflow some new solder to the positive battery connector and resolder the battery's positive battery lead. That was hard to say. It took me a good three tries to get that right. And finally, I reinstalled the batteries. This is like the fourth time. Uh, I didn't really show me taking them off, but yeah, I've been taking them off. Test the voltages again. And yes, now that it reads nice and strong at 3.2 volts. Moment of truth, I power it on and sure enough, LED comes on. Now I gotta turn this up and slowly but surely the square peg on the motor starts moving. Ah oh yeah, the speed controller is doing its job. So here's a closer shot. Turning the speed controller knob to the right increases the speed. 
and obviously turning it to the left decreases the speed. Now I gotta get rid of the old switch to make room for the new one. I just pry it out using a small screwdriver. I mean it's just held in with tabs so it's not that hard. Next I remove the knob and using a 10 millimeter deep socket I remove the mounting nut. Next I gotta measure the diameter of the pot. It measures 6.7 millimeters so any 7 millimeter drill bit will work perfectly to drill a mounting hole. With a small drill bit first I drill a small pilot hole and then I slowly increase the size of the drill bits to enlarge the hole larger and larger until it reaches the correct size. Doing it this way will prevent accidentally cracking the plastic case. It took four smaller drill bits before I got to the fifth and final drill bit size. And after all that effort I was rewarded with a nice clean mounting hole. All was going well, but then I ran into a slight issue. When mounting the PCB, I noticed that there was not enough thread sticking out. This is because the displaced motor housing is a round shape, but the PCB on the controller is a square shape. Thus, the corners of the PCB hit the case before the pot can sit properly and expose all the threads for mounting. This will probably make the electronics community cringe, but I just took some wire cutters, snipped off the corners where the mounting holes were, and filed down the corners a little more. After all this savagery, the controller fit perfectly. Now I place the washer and the mounting nut and hand tighten it all using the socket. Just snug it up but don't over tighten it as you could strip the threads or even crack the plastic so and after testing to see if it moves uh, which it don't I reinstall the knob it all seems to be in proper working order should be good now the old markings don't mean anything but we'll deal with those in a minute I reinstalled the batteries for like the sixth time and reinstall the rotating surface. Damn, I just noticed how messed up and scratched up it is. Oh well. And one more test with the rotating surface on and sure enough, it works. Next I give the turntable a good wipe down. And reinstall the battery cover. In theory, I shouldn't need to replace these batteries for like two or more years. And finally, I'm going to deal with the old power switch markings. With the Dymo label maker, I just make a new set of on and off labels that match the speed controller. I think it looks good. I mean, you're never gonna see it because this side is always gonna face away from the camera. And now the absolute final test to admire the mod using a finished model let's power it on I did notice that the rotating display won't start moving until you turn the knob till about the 11 o'clock position and that's pretty much the slowest speed this mod can do which is perfect I'm so far loving it because I can definitely adjust this to my needs Turning the knob to the 12 o'clock position seems to mimic the rotation speed that I was used to before I replaced the batteries. I'm stoked. The 1 o'clock position mimics the low speed setting with fresh batteries. And the 3 o'clock position mimics the high speed setting with fresh batteries. Beyond this is unknown territory and we still have plenty of juice left. Hit me bro, go faster. Okay, now we're really moving. I'm getting all that detail really fast. Floor it, bro. Do it. Ah, yeah. Max speed. Goody, 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 bro. Alright, I gotta turn it down. I'm getting dizzy just looking at it. 
I'm going to turn it back down to the 12 o'clock position. That was my favorite position. It's what I'm used to. In conclusion, I had a lot of fun with this mod and I'm stoked that I got the rotation speed that I was used to. With the speed controller only costing under 7 US dollars shipped, it's a relatively cheap mod that will make your rotating display more versatile. For some of you that are more electronic savvy, you can do more mods like maybe installing a rechargeable battery or installing a connector so that it can run on a 3.5 volt AC adapter. Well that's it for this video. Make sure to check out my Instagram, Twitter and Patreon accounts if you haven't already done so. And if you liked the video, hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks for visiting the factory and I hope to see you here on the next video. Oof. Oh my god, I am so dumb. <laughs> Got the spelling right this time. But it's backwards. Mm, why am I struggling so much with this label?